Hello, this is John, and this is going to be a very important video. I uploaded a video earlier today about an executive order that President Donald J. Trump signed on January 19th, 2021. It has been taken down. The link is in the description, and it does not work. But the thing is, we're one step ahead of them because it can still be found on archive.org, where they take published websites and pages and they archive them. So even though the White House has tried to delete this and get rid of this executive order, and it's all about cyber security when it comes to voting, electronic voting machines, and what needs to be go done to protect voter integrity, what I did is I did a full read of it earlier today. I just didn't upload it because I got into studying scripture and doing some videos on scripture earlier. But let me show you what I got. So I'm over here on my YouTube channel and I've got the capability, as you can see, of editing the video. You can see my little, this. so I'm going to go to edit video. And let me zoom in on this real quick. And as you can see, it reads last minute executive order, national emergency, malicious cyber enabled. Okay, you see it's right here. Whitehouse.gov presidential actions, executive order, taking additional steps, address national emergency, respects significant uh, malicious cyber enabled activities. That's an executive order that he signed in. And this is the link to it right here. But let's watch what happens when you hit the link. In my video description, I have put the link. And you click on this, and this is what comes up. So what can we do about this? Are we just going to let them delete this uh, executive order? Or do you want to hear what it actually says? Well, here's how you can see what it says. Just go to Google, type in Wayback Machine. As you can see right here, Wayback Machine. And that takes you to an internet archive. This thing automatically uploads archived web pages. And you go here to internet or the Wayback Machine. And this is how you can find deleted web pages. We're at the Wayback Machine. And you copy the full URL. Let me zoom in on that real quick. So you can see I have it all copied. I just click that and I'll copy it. And so I've got the full URL, which I'll put in the description, and I'll also put it in the comments so that if you're on YouTube, you can copy it from the comments, or if you're on Facebook, you can copy it from the comments also. So I'll look for my comment on Facebook. So I copied it, and I come back to the Wayback Machine, and I just paste this in there, right like that, paste, and then browse history. And this is what you get. It comes up as it was archived in 2021 so then what you got to do is go down to the calendar and you see here it was archived on january 20 21 before they deleted it so you click on this and if right here you click on that arch and on archive.org web archive.org you got the full executive order right here and it goes down and it's all about protecting voter integrity in the United States of America. And you have down here at the bottom, Donald J. Trump. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to attach the read I did earlier today on this executive order. And uh, you're going to have a surprise ending. I hope you listen to it through the end. Hello, this is John at the True Source as we are seeking the truth daily together. As we see over here at the whitehouse.gov on January 19th, 2021, President Donald J. Trump signed a last minute executive order, executive order on taking additional steps to address the national emergency with respect to significant malicious cyber enabled activities issued on January 19, 2021, National Security and Defense. This will be a full reading of this executive order. I, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, find that additional steps must be taken to deal with the national emergency related to significant 
malicious cyber-enabled activities declared in Executive Order 13694 of April 1, 2015, blocking the property of certain persons engaging in significant malicious cyber-enabled activities, as amended to address the use of United States infrastructure as a service, LAAS products by foreign malicious cyber actors, LAAS products provide persons the ability to run software and store data on servers offered for rent or lease without responsibility for the maintenance, maintenance or operation cost of those servers. Foreign malicious cyber actors aim to harm the United States economy through the theft of intellectual property and sensitive data and to threaten national security by targeting United States critical infrastructure for malicious cyber-enabled activities. Foreign actors use United States LAAS products for a variety of tasks in carrying out malicious cyber-enabled activities, which makes it extremely difficult for United States officials to track and obtain information through legal process before these foreign actors transition to replacement infrastructure and destroy evidence of their prior activities. Foreign resellers of United States LAAS products make it easier for foreign actors to access these products and evade detection. This order provides authority to impose record-keeping obligations with respect to foreign transactions. To address these threats, deter foreign malicious cyber actors use of United States lost products and to assist in the investigation of transactions involving foreign malicious cyber actors United States must ensure that providers offering United States lost products verify and identify of persons obtaining a lost account account for the provision of these products and maintain records of those transactions in appropriate circumstances to further protect against malicious cyber enabled activities the United States must also limit certain foreign actors access to United States lost products further the United States must encourage more robust corporation co cooperation among United States lost providers including by increasing voluntary information sharing to bluster efforts to twat the actions of foreign malicious cyber actors. Accordingly, I hereby order Section 1, Verification of Identity. Within 180 days of the date of this order, the Secretary of Commerce shall provide for notice and comment regulations that require United States lost providers to verify and identify of a foreign person that obtains an account. These regulations shall, at a minimum, a. set forth the minimum standard that United States lost providers must adopt to verify the identity of a foreign person in connection with the opening of an account or the maintenance of an executive existing account including the types of documentation and procedures required to verify identity of any foreign person acting as a leasee or subleasee of these products or services records that United States lost providers must securely maintain regarding a foreign person that obtains an account, including information establishing. A. Identify the identity of each foreign person and the person's information, including name, national identification number, and address. B. Means and source of payment, including any associated financial institution and, and other identifiers, such as credit card number, account number, customer identifier, transaction identifiers, and virtual currency wallet or wallet address identifier. He's making sure 
that all the bases are covered in regards to uh, accountability for anybody who chooses to offer electronic voting service to the United States of America, which is a good idea. Uh, let's see. Okay. C, electronic mail address and telephonic contract information used to verify foreign person's identity. D, internet protocol access, use of access or administration and the date and time each of each such access of administrative actions related to ongoing verification of such foreign person's ownership of such an account. Methods of limiting all third-party access to the information described in this subsection except insofar as such access is otherwise consistent with this order and allowed under applicable law. Take into consideration the type of account maintained by United States loss providers methods of operating an account, opening an account and types of identifying information available to accomplish the objectives of identifying foreign malicious cyber actors using any such products to avoid uh, and avoiding the imposition of an undue burden on such providers. And I'll tell you what, this goes on. I'm going to show you, I mean, you can pause this and read it for yourself. I'll make it easy for you. And so, you know, as you're just scrolling down, you can pause it and you can read it. I'll just kind of talk through this because what he's basically doing with this executive order is making sure that every T is crossed and every I is dotted when it comes to uh, recount after a certain voting is done. Also, uh, keeping track of what's going on within the polling places by way of making sure these machines aren't sending or receiving dot data but also he wants to make sure for the president wants to make sure that uh that the votes are accurate and accountable so when a revote comes around they can track any fraudulent or uh bad actor activity and so this is what this uh, long executive order is all about because we know what transpired, and I don't care what party line you tend to hang out on, or uh, whether it be left or right, but you can't help. But, I mean, when the Republicans vote watchers, the vote counting watchers were not allowed in the buildings. When they were boarding up the windows, they could have been changing out software. You don't know what they were doing. They were just trying to hide what was going on within the the uh, counting facilities, which isn't right. And there was all kinds of evidence that came forward. And, uh, but the courts would not hear it. It's not the fact that the courts looked at the evidence and made a ruling on it. What transpired is the courts just chose not to look at the evidence. Well, we're not going to look at the evidence. And, you know, I thought in America you could take anything to court. The court would have to look at it and determine, of course, that's a, civil lawsuit i guess but still everybody saw what truly went on this year and now as we look at the left they won but but the they're attacking they're attacking they're trying they're going they they they've got the house the senate and the presidency and now that talking about a bad winner instead of uh you know shaking the hands of the Republicans, they want to go after them and get rid of 74,000 people that they're talking about are got to be re-educated. I mean, it's crazy how the Democrats are acting now that they won. And I'm going to tell you what. Uh, there's this guy, his name is Brandon, and I'm going to attach what he had to say about when he chose to leave the Democratic Party, and he gives a good account as to why. So I hope you will stick around after you see this executive order and you see how the Democrats are acting with the victory that they've got all throughout the government. We're going to have apparently maybe four more years of a totally Democratic left-wing government, and you're going to see 
the chaos at the border again. You're going to see uh, bad deals made with China. You're going to see a lot of tax increases to go into this Green New Deal. And like I said, when they increase the taxes on the rich, the rich who provide the products, services, and goods are just going to increase the prices of their products, services, and goods. And you're going to wind up paying the price by way of inflation and higher prices across the board for everything. So here is Brandon, my friends. Once upon a time, I was a liberal. Well, to be honest, less than a year ago, I was still a liberal. I became a liberal because I felt I'd found a tribe whose values aligned with my own. I staunchly reject racism of any kind. I reject the marginalization of any human being based off of their gender or sexual orientation. I reject tyrannical groupthink. I reject a system which allows an ambitious, misinformed, and dogmatic mob to suppress free speech, create false narratives, and apathetically steamroll over the truth. I reject the acceptance of junk science and superstition to advance ideological agendas. I reject hate. These are the reasons why I became a liberal. And these are the same reasons why I am now walking away. For years now, I have watched as the left has devolved into intolerant, inflexible, illogical, hateful, misguided, ill-informed, un-American, hypocritical, menacing, callous, ignorant, narrow-minded, and at times, blatantly fascistic behavior and rhetoric. Liberalism has been co-opted and absorbed by the very characteristics it claims to fight against. For years now, I've watched as people on the left have become anesthetized to their own prejudices and bigotry, and the prejudices and bigotry of those around them who echo their values. I have watched as formerly sensible people who claim to reject racism have come to embrace the principles of universally hating and blaming all of society's problems on all people who have white skin. I have witnessed the irony of advocacy for gender equality morph into blatant hatred and intolerance of men and masculinity. I have seen the once earnest fight for equality for the LGBT community mutate into an illogical demonization of heteronormativity and the push to vilify and attack our conventional concepts of gender. These same self-proclaimed victims of intolerance now turning on the gay community that they attached themselves to to advance their agenda, now calling gay people privileged and themselves victims of injustice. I have watched as the left has allowed themselves to become hypnotized by false narratives and conclusions perpetuated by social justice warriors who misrepresent and misconstrue facts, evidence, and events to confirm their own biases that everyone who does not comply with their prejudicial conclusions and follow their orders is a racist, a bigot, a Nazi, a white supremacist, homophobic, Islamophobic, xenophobic, misogynistic, an alt-right extremist. And I have watched as they have used these heartless and carelessly assigned labels to intimidate, threaten, bully, silence, attack, unemploy, blacklist, and destroy anybody who dares to fight back. They'll come for me, and then they'll come for you. And worst of all, the Democratic Party and the liberal media has embraced, affirmed, aided, and abetted this cult ideology. In an effort to gain voters and maintain power, the Democratic Party that I once loved has joined forces with the extremist left. The Democratic Party and the liberal media now believe their own ill-gotten conclusions and have ominously decided that they, and only they, know the remedy for society's ills. The left has decided that the solution to problems with race relations in America is more racism. The left believes that attacking, insulting, and dehumanizing one group of people elevates another. The left now believes that there are no boundaries when telling lies, omitting the truth, or misrepresenting facts when telling the news, because their end justifies their means. The left has now decided that its point of view is the only acceptable one, and that suppressing, censoring, and banning open dialogue and debate is virtuous and progressive. The Democratic Party has adopted a deleterious belief system happily and without skepticism, separating people into groups based off of identity and then organizing them into camps of victims and oppressors. If you are a person of color, an LGBT person, a woman, or an American immigrant, the Democratic Party wants you to know that you are a victim and destined to stay that way. 
They will insist that you are a victim doomed to exist within a system that is rigged against you. That you are a victim of systemic oppression. That you are a victim of your circumstances and that no amount of hard work or motivational action will ever allow you to overcome your victimhood or the privilege of those around you. This is perhaps the Democratic Party's greatest and most insidious lie. But if you are a minority in America today, the left-wing politicians and the liberal media don't want you to ever discover this lie. So they bombard us with stories designed to reinforce the narrative that you are in danger, that you cannot succeed. They manipulate your fears and concerns by telling you that you are disadvantaged, disempowered, and disposable to everyone except them. They will tell you that you need them. They will tell you that you are only safe under their supervision. They will promise to liberate you from all that chains you. And then, they will do absolutely nothing for you. Once upon a time, I was a liberal. But liberalism has changed, and I will no longer be a part of an ideology or political party that represents everything that contradicts my values of unity, equal opportunity, personal empowerment, compassion, and love. So I am walking away, and I encourage all of you to do the same. Walk away. The writing is on the wall, my friends. It is very important for anybody out there that has screen capture to go here and screen capture this last executive order that President Donald J. Trump put into play. because. It's all about the future integrity of our United States election. If you want your vote to count, please share and follow me on Facebook and YouTube. And let's keep seeking the truth daily together. The truth will find us seeking. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you always.